Alec Murdoch says this polygraph examination was a setup, something the prosecutor planned from the very beginning. Alec Murdoch even got into a fight with the polygraph examiner. But did they ask him about the murders in the polygraph exam? This past week, we learned Alec Murdoch failed a polygraph exam given to him by the federal government. It was an enormous blow for Alec Murdoch. He had a sweet plea deal set up and ready to go. All he had to do was meet with the FBI, tell them the truth, and the prosecutors agreed to recommend that Alec's prison sentence be served concurrently with his state charges. That means when he served a year on the state charge, he would also check off a year on the federal charge. That's way better than adding the federal charges on the end of the state sentence. After all, Alec Murdoch is already serving 27 years in the state penitentiary. Of course, right now, Alec Murdoch is serving life without parole for murdering his wife, Maggie, and his son, Paul. So what does he really care whether he tacks on a few years here or there on top of a life sentence without parole? I mean, what's the difference, right? But Alec Murdoch is nothing if not an optimist. He's hoping he can beat that murder rap, get out of state prison in only 22 years, plenty of time to hug Buster's kids or at least see them graduate from college. But that sweet plea deal had a really big catch. And here it is in black and white plus yellow. The defendant agrees to submit to such polygraph examinations as may be requested by the government and agrees that any such examinations shall be performed by a polygraph examiner selected by the government. Defendant further agrees that his, her refusal to take or his, her failure to pass any such polygraph examination to the government satisfaction will result at the government's sole discretion in the obligations of the government within the agreement becoming null and void. So after Alec interviewed with the FBI, the government got to decide whether Alec Murdoch took a polygraph to confirm he told the truth. And the government got to pick the polygraph examiner. And the government even got to decide whether Alec Murdoch passed in its sole discretion, which means the government and only the government got to decide whether or not Alec Murdoch passed that exam. All of that is written into the agreement. So what happens if Alec Murdoch fails a polygraph exam? The defendant, Alec Murdoch, will not be permitted to withdraw his or her plea of guilty in, to the offenses described above. All additional charges known to the government may be filed in the appropriate district. The government will argue for a maximum sentence for the offense to which the defendant has pleaded guilty, and the government will use any and all information and testimony provided by the defendant pursuant to this agreement or any prior proffer agreements in the prosecution of the defendant of all charges. So in other words, under this agreement, Alec Murdoch is way, way worse if he cooperates, but then does not pass a polygraph because the government is then allowed to take those interviews and use the information it got to file more charges and to argue that Alec should get the maximum offense. And there's nothing he can do about it because under the agreement, he cannot withdraw his guilty plea. That is worst case scenario for Alec Murdoch. And the feds are saying that's exactly what happened. They decided Alec Murdoch would have to take a lie detector test and he failed it. They say they asked two categories of questions about the involvement of another attorney in his financial crimes and also about whether he was hiding assets and he failed both categories. That second category is especially intriguing because a lot of people have puzzled over the question. If Alec Murdoch embezzled that many millions of dollars, if he stole that much money from his partners, from his clients, where did it all go? So the feds say that because Alec Murdoch failed the polygraph, that sweet deal, the concurrent sentence that would let Alec get out of prison without serving any more time than he's already serving in state prison, that deal is off the table. But Alec Murdoch says this whole polygraph examination was a setup, 
something the prosecutor planned from the very beginning. Here's what he says. There are legitimate questions as to whether the government intentionally manipulated the results to void the plea agreement and achieve the prosecutor's stated desire to ensure that he's never a free man again. So Alec Murdoch is saying the prosecutor planned this all along. And one way Alec Murdoch says he can tell that is the statements prosecutors made in the press right after Alec signed the plea deal. Immediately following Murdoch's guilty plea, prosecutors declared to the press that the reason Murdoch was federally prosecuted was to ensure he's never a free man again. Alec Murdoch also says that the questions he was asked during the polygraph exam were rigged. They were intentionally written in such a way that he would fail the exam. Here's what his attorneys wrote. Here, it appears that the polygrapher designed the relevant question in such a way to ensure that Murdoch would fail the exam in an effort to accomplish the prosecutor's stated goal of ensuring that he will never be a free man again. And Alec Murdoch seems to think that the polygraph examiner was in on the game. He said, the polygraph examiner engaged in what can only be described as odd conduct during the pretest interview. First, declaring his belief that Murdoch is innocent of the murders of his wife and son, and then secretly confiding in Murdoch that he had just returned from performing a polygraph examination on Joram Vandersloop regarding the murder of Natalie Holloway. In fact, what Alec tells us is that he got into a fight with the polygraph examiner. Here's the quote. The polygraph examiner also argued with Murdoch over the meaning of hidden assets, which the examiner used in his test question. As explained herein, this alone could have caused Murdoch to react to the question. During the pretest interview, Murdoch expressed confusion and uncertainty regarding the agent's use of the term hidden assets, primarily because Murdoch had never been requested to identify his assets, and he was unsure which assets the investigators and the state-appointed receiver had identified. Murdoch's lawyers say that the questions in the exam violated the standards set by the Global Polygraph Network. Alec Murdoch also thinks the government is hiding information from him because it wants to keep him from proving that the lie detector test was a sham. Upon learning that the government contends Murdoch failed the polygraph, the undersigned requested charts of the test so that we could have an independent expert review them. The government refused our request. The government's response is, you agreed to this. Here's what they say. Murdoch and his attorney both signed his plea agreement. Murdoch agreed to submit to a polygraph examination, quote, as may be requested by the government. He agreed that any such examination would be performed by a polygraph examiner selected by the government. And most importantly, he agreed that his failure to pass any such polygraph examination to the government's satisfaction will result at the government's sole discretion in the obligation of the government within the agreement becoming null and void. So the prosecution says, hey, you made this deal. You signed it. Your lawyer signed it. Maybe it was a bad deal for you, but it's the deal you made and you're stuck with it. There's only one way out of this deal, Murdoch, the government says. Murdoch has not made any showing, much less a substantial one, that the government has acted in bad faith. He relies on an isolated press statement. The government says, you've got to prove bad faith and you're nowhere near it. The government says one comment to the media, that's not bad faith. So we'll find out Monday what the court says about Alec Murdoch's arguments. But there is a burning question we all have. Did they ask him about the murders in the polygraph exam? Alec Murdoch says he didn't murder Maggie and Paul. Well, did he or didn't he? Here's the perfect chance to find out, right? But the examiner did not ask Alec Murdoch any questions about whether he committed the murders. And the reason why might surprise you, Alec Murdoch says he asked to be examined about the murders, but here's what happened. 
the examiner, upon meeting Murdoch, explained that he did not believe Murdoch murdered his wife and son. The examiner also inquired who Murdoch thought killed his wife and son. In response to this inquiry, Murdoch asked the examiner to polygraph him on his wife's and son's murders. The examiner refused. I'm guessing that the examiner refused to ask those questions because they were irrelevant. They might even have contaminated the rest of the exam. The polygraph examiner was hired by the federal government. The federal government is not prosecuting Alec Murdoch for the murders of Maggie and Paul. That was a state case prosecuted by South Carolina. The federal government is only prosecuting Alec Murdoch for financial crimes that violate federal laws. Since murder was not on the table, it would have been inappropriate for the examiner to ask Alec Murdoch about the murders, but it does still seem like a real missed opportunity. Ironically, at his murder trial, Alec Murdoch wanted to use evidence that cousin Eddie Smith had failed a polygraph exam about his knowledge of or involvement in the murders of Maggie and Paul, but the state opposed the request. Now, ironically, the federal government is using a lie detector test against Alec Murdoch. According to the United States Probation Office sentencing report, Alec Murdoch should get between 210 and 262 months for his federal crimes. That would be between 17.5 and 21.8 years. But how will they be served? Subscribe to find out what happens at Alec Murdoch's sentencing on Monday.